From the debut of some of the biggest names in the WWE Women's history to the legendary I Quit match and the introduction of the Divas Championship, this is everything that happened in 2008 WWE Women's Division. Welcome to Drink Bell, this is DS and Who Said? 2015 is when Women's Evolution started because today we're going to talk about everything that happened in 2008 WWE Women's Division. And this is a really interesting year because we've seen the debut of some of the biggest names in the women's wrestling histories. We've also seen some of the rising stars take that spotlight. You know, WWE likes to tell the story of how Women's Division died when Trish and Lita retired, but the fire is here, the talent is here, and the matches were there too. So we're going to talk all about the amazing things that happened in this year. So let's start with Raw first. I am the Glamazon, the most beautiful and talented diva to ever step foot in this ring. 2008 starts with the Glamazon as the WWE Women's Champion. She's got the iron grip on the throne and her main rival at this time was Mickey James even though Glamazon continues to beat her week after week, which resulted in Mickey James being very, very frustrated. I feel like I can't beat her and I I don't know what to choose. Oh, Mickey, you're so sad. But Women's Championship who? Because it's time for the Playboy push. Uh -huh. The early 2008's main storyline revolves around the Playboy cover, not the Women's Championship. And we see the formal Playboy cover girl and the Diva Search winner Ashley Massaro return to WWE to compete in a lingerie pillow fight fatal five-way match. Her brief hiatus was to compete in the Survivor, by the way. At Royal Rumble, Ashley lets Maria Kanellis know that Hugh Hefner wants Maria to pose for Playboy. Do you guys really want to see me pose for Playboy? Maria's then on-screen boyfriend, Santino Morella, quickly interrupts Ashley to show his disapproval of this idea. The answer is no! And this mess of a segment ends with Ashley beating this oily, naked dancer with <laughs> cocks in her hand. At No Way Out, we see Maria Canales attend the Playboy party to ask Hugh Hefner if she'd be a good fit for Playboy. And on Raw, So what do you want? You're gonna get! Santino make an ultimatum saying that she needs to beat Beth Phoenix to pose for Playboy. By the way, Beth looked amazing this time. So here's a pop quiz. Who comes out to help Maria Canales pose for Playboy here? And the answer is Go Daddy, Candice Michelle. Yes, during this match, another formal Playboy cover girl, Candice Michelle, returns to distract Beth and help Maria pose for Playboy. And this sets up the Bunny Mania tag team match with Snoop Dogg as the master of ceremonies at WrestleMania. This feud continues with Santino trying to sabotage Maria's Playboy cover reveal, but what was really sabotage was Candice's big WrestleMania return because she re injures her left collarbone in her first match back. Ashley then fills in for Candice to make sure that everything goes smoothly at WrestleMania. WrestleMania, but during the match at WrestleMania, lights go off for almost half of the match. And poor Maria not only loses the match, but she makes out with Sasha Banks' cousin. Typical Playboy cover girl. But there's a silver lining for Maria because she defeats Santino in Anything Goes match as the divas come out to beat up the misogynist. WWE divas should not even be competing. They should be at home. Though they should have really attacked him more to prevent that freaking Miss WrestleMania shit from happening. My name is Santino. Speaking of Playboy, Playboy cover girls, we saw formal Playboy cover girls retire in 2008. Who are they? And the answer is Tori Wilson and Ashley Masato. So now the Hall of Famer Tori Wilson was released from WWE contract in May of 2008 after suffering from the back injury and then she subsequently announced her retirement. And Ashley Massaro was released in July as she asked the company to be released because she wanted to take care of her daughter who was sick at the time. Now unfortunately the Playboy push quickly ends when Beth Phoenix squashes Maria at the start of April and Mickey James is back in the spotlight. And here Mickey James picks up a surprise win from Beth Phoenix taking the WWE Women's Championship in London. Oh, the emotion. I knew it! I knew I could beat her! I swear! Uh. Oh. This was also the first time the WWE Women's title changed hands in a televised match overseas. A fun fact, Mickey James, I guess, loves Europe because in 2007, Mickey James picked up a random championship win in Paris. <laughs> a week after, babyface divas of all three brands throw Mickey a big celebration. Everyone said she was unstoppable, but last week, I proved everyone wrong. And Beth comes out with the fellow heel divas to confront her. Listening to this pathetic love fest 
prompted us to come out here and break up your little party. And here, Michelle McCool interrupts out of nowhere. This is a slap in the face. Oh! Really sticking up for Mickey. We'll talk about her character development a little bit in the SmackDown section, but here she comes off real strong. <laughs> After this confrontation, Team Mickey James faces Team Beth Phoenix in a 12 Diva tag team match, where Beth Phoenix picks up the win, pinning Ashley Massaro. But this win eventually doesn't really mean much because Mickey James win the rematch the night after Backlash by pinning Jillian Hall on Raw. Beth then has the WWE Women's Championship match against Mickey James in a Lumberjill match, but Beth loses to Mickey after Melina accidentally hits Beth with her boot. This jumpstarts the legendary feud between Beth Phoenix the Glamazon and Melina. Beth gets petty and leaves Melina during a tag match, and then the two get in a crazy backstage fight. <laughs> This is probably my favorite one since Trish and Lita's right before WrestleMania 18. This was great. And with Mickey James as a third will, Melina and Beth Phoenix compete in a triple threat women's championship match at Judgment Day. Here we see the intense double backbreaker swap from Beth, but Mickey ultimately wins by pinning Melina. Beth and Melina's feud continue until one night stand where the two compete in a legendary I Quit match. Damn, this match was so, so good. Beth defeats Melina in this match, but their feud continues with Melina showing one of the best transitions from heel to baby phase, the emotion she showed. Is that a tag? I guess that's all Melina wanted was to get her hands on the glamazon! But the feud, however, is cut short as Melina injures her ankle during a tag match against Natalia and Victoria. So what happened to the women's champion, Mickey James? Since basically ending the storyline with Beth by defeating her in a non-title match, she doesn't do much for a while. Poor Mickey lives in the spotlight even as a champion. But she does keep herself busy involving herself with John Cena in a romance storyline where things get pretty sexy. Last night. Uh, no way! But this angle gets randomly dropped. But no time to cry over romance. Mickey James gets into a storyline with the newcomer Katie Lee Burchill. Katie Lee shocks the WWE Universe in more than one way. If John Cena came out with me and my brother, he'd be having a lot more than just a little fun. As her in ring debut is in an intergender action, she teams her with her brother to compete in matches against men and win them. She then moves her interest from her brother to the championship. After pitting Mickey James multiple times, she challenges Mickey James at Night of Champions, where Mickey successfully defends her title. Their feud continues as Katie Lee attacks Mickey in front of Mickey's father in the audience, and Mickey, who's suddenly not dating John Cena anymore, looks for a new male partner to even out the Birchall couple. Wait, no, siblings. The Birchall siblings. So here's a quiz. Who is Mickey James' new male partner? It is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, Kofi Kingston. This feud between the two teams eventually wraps up as Mickey defeats Katie Lee in another women's championship match, but there was another power couple waiting for the cup of Kofi and Mickey. It's a newly partner of Beth Phoenix and Santino Morella. So how did this romance start? The start of Glamorella is when Beth Phoenix defeated Santino in his open challenge. Beth then sets her eyes on Santino until they kiss. And then kiss again. And then they challenge Mickey James and Kofi Kingston for the intergender winner takes all tag team match for the women's championship and intercontinental championship at SummerSlam. And at SummerSlam, Beth picks up the win for both her and Santino with the huge Glam Slam. Are the Glamorella happily ever after? Well, kind of, but they do have turbulences like any other couple. For example, Beth beats up Santino after she loses to Kelly Kelly due to his distraction. She was also bleeding from this match. But Beth's love for Santino is made clear when she takes Batista's spine buster for standing up for her man. Whoa! And Santino also continues to love Beth Phoenix even after that awkward attack on a dude from Jackass. Back to the championship storyline. Candice Michelle returns from the injury and defeats the champion in a tag match with a roll-up. My favorite interaction between the two is when Beth Phoenix awkwardly just like follows Candice Michelle during her entrance. So bizarre. Beth Phoenix ultimately defeats Candice Michelle with the Glam Slam at No Mercy, wrapping up this storyline. Or Candy wrapping up this storyline. So here's the weird thing about 2008. For some reason, Jamie Noble 
got highly involved with several divas throughout the year. We can be Brawl's power couple. He tries for weeks to win Layla's heart, but Layla chooses William Regal instead of Jamie, and then Regal beats him up for weeks. Then Mickey James somehow feels really sympathetic and tries to help Jamie Noble pick up the win from Burchill's siblings, but then they lose to Glamorella again. And then they were supposed to face William Regal and Layla, like that makes the storyline sense. But what happens is at Cyber Sunday, they didn't get enough votes, so they couldn't have the match of the pay-per-view. Yeah, so the year has been kind of hit and miss with Mickie James, but she did prove that the crowd is still in love, no, obsessed for Mickie James by winning the Halloween costume contest two years in a row. After beating Candice Michelle, Beth Phoenix defeats Mickie James in the Women's Championship. She also defeats 2008 Hall of Famer Mae Young in a 16 women tag match. In the Survivor Series, Beth Phoenix leads the team Raw to victory when she became the sole survivor. Although I have to say the MVP of this match is probably Maurice, and we're going to talk about her, the rise of Maurice, in the SmackDown section more. After Survivor Series, Melina comes back with the whole new fashion losing the fur boots. This starts her feud with Beth Phoenix, but this time Melina as a full-fledged babyface. She even gets into a split battle with Santino Morella. Oh, Santino, let me show you how it's done! And when Diva of the Year Slammy goes to Beth, Melina attacks her. In the last Raw episode of the year, we see Melina become the number one contender winning the Divas Battle Royale. Melina's headed to the Royal Rumble! So here's the place. When Melina made her return to WWE, this Diva debuts that night. Who would it be? The answer is Rosa Mendez. Rosa debuts as a super fan of Beth Phoenix, and we see them interact more and more as week pass by. Hey! Hey, hey! Hold it back! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hey, get her out of here! Look out! Hey, that's a fan! Now, let's not forget about one diva that was really growing in 2008, and that is Kelly Kelly. She's been slowly being pushed on Raw throughout the year as she picks up big wins after big wins, and we also see her get involved with brief angles with likes of Batista and Crime Time. And at the end of the year, we see Kane abduct Kelly Kelly after presenting the couple's awards together at Slammy, but this weird love storyline does have silver lining. When Kelly Kelly abruptly leaves one Raw episode where she was supposed to tag with John Cena, Cena surprises everyone by Bish Stratus to fail in for Kelly Kelly in the main event of Raw. This was in Trisha's hometown, Toronto, in the same arena she retired two years before. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, you might also like this t-shirt. WWE Women's Division periodic table, so we have everyone from Mae Young to Bianca Blair, EST. If you can really name everyone in this periodic table, you are definitely the master of WWE Women's History. So check it out in our Teespring down below here. Alright, so that was Raw and let's move to SmackDown. We begin the year with the most divas being part of men's storyline. Cherry is managing Deuce and Domino. Maurice comes back flirting with Teddy Long. Well, how do I look? And Michelle McCool is in a three-way relationship with Chuck Palumbo and Jamie Noble. See? I told you Jamie Noble gets involved a lot. But yeah, this three-way storyline is a mess. She gets even taken out with the stretcher. Despicable is a word that comes to my mind. But she does show a lot of promise in the ring, debuting the new finisher, Wings of Love. And Michelle McCool eventually gets rid of both men in her life. Or more like, they leave her be when the storyline fizzles out after Chuck ultimately defeats Jamie Noble, and Jamie Noble dumps Michelle McCool. It's time to let you off the hook and for Jamie Noble to recast Michelle. After that, WB starts this weird four-week contest to find the top diva of SmackDown with Eve Torres, Cherry, Maurice, Victoria, and Michelle McCool as a competitor. After the swimsuit contest, boot camp, arm wrestling, and wet and wild water match, Maurice, Victoria, Eve Torres are eliminated from the audience vote. And in the finals, Michelle McCool win the contest. So here's a quiz. What did Michelle McCool win for winning this contest? The answer is a motorcycle. So she never forgets about all those beautiful days cycling around with Chuck Palumbo, her ex. This win prompts Victoria. Um, the number one diva on SmackDown. To bring out the debuting Natalia to attack both Michelle and Cherry. Ring a bell, Neidhart. She does debut with her now signature blonde hair, but she later dyes it red, allegedly to differentiate herself from Beth Phoenix. <laughs> Yeah, baby. 
The heels of SmackDown, Victoria, Natty, and Maurice then feud with Cherry and Michelle, and in this process, Maurice gets Deuce and Domino to dump Cherry and replace her as a new manager of the team. And we see Cherry and Maurice feud for a bit where there isn't a decisive winner. In June, SmackDown general manager Vicky Guerrero announces the introduction of Divas Championship, and we get two Golden Dream matches to decide the two challengers for the title. And Natalia and Michelle McCool win the matches to set up the first Divas Championship match. And at the Great America Bash, Michelle McCool wins the WWE Divas Champion, becoming the historic first ever champion for this title. In the meantime, the GM, Vicky Guerrero, is busy preparing for her wedding, and she brings in Alicia Fox as the wedding planner. This is Alicia Fox. She's our wedding planner. But here's a quiz. Which SmackDown diva catches the bouquet that Vicky throws? The answer is Cherry. During her pre-wedding celebration, Vicky throws a bouquet with Cherry catches it, and then she competes with Cherry in her last singles match in WWE as she was later released from her WWE contract in August. The wedding goes sour, by the way, when Triple H exposes Edge for cheating on Vicky with Alicia Fox. Since the crowning of the Divas Champion, we see Divas action really get invigorated in SmackDown side. We have Maria Canales get drafted to SmackDown and the Brie Bella debut. And during this time, Maurice really starts to grow as a top heel of SmackDown. As she continues to be absolutely unbearable backstage to everyone. You're not a diva. You're a dog. Jealousy is so ugly. Your outfits. You're not going in the ring wearing this, don't you? The material look really cheap. The construction really sloppy. After defeating Maria Kanellis in the match, she gets a chance to challenge Michelle McCool for the Divas Championship at Unforgiven. Maurice, however, lose to Michelle McCool at Unforgiven. Oh, no. oh! And on SmackDown a couple weeks after. God, a strength! Oh! The winds of love! Maurice continued to feud with Michelle McCool, even interfering in the now infamous Champion vs. Champion match and helped Beth Phoenix defeat McCool. And we all remember the glam slam that happened this night. In the meantime, Brie Bella continued to defeat Victoria and Natalia with her magical power. She drops hints of what's to come. Do you think maybe you can make me something for the ring? Could you make me an extra one exactly the same? Girl can have too many outfits. Oh, Miss Fashion Designer. I guess Maria's gimmick then was that she's a designer. But you know what? We don't keep secrets around here, Brie. No secrets. And on November 7th, after two months of teasing and defeating poor Victoria, Nikki Bella officially debuts from beneath the ring. Two balls! The twins! Now, it's finally time for Michelle, I'm loving life McCool's heel turn. When Maria wins the Divas Las Vegas pole match to win the number one contendership match, Michelle starts to slowly show her real color. She first treats Maria like she's not a threat. Uh, see you later. Hi. And then gets more and more annoyed with Maria leading up to the Divas championship match. We're gonna talk about this right now. You've got to learn to focus. She's a good friend of mine, but um, she's missing a little bit upstairs, if you know what I mean. Before their championship match, we got Survivor Series, and this was the first time we had Raw vs. SmackDown 5-on-5 five five elimination match with Michelle as a captain of SmackDown. In this match, Michelle gets eliminated early by Mickie James after fighting with Maurice. Oh, hey! The same pace! That's a sterling here for the teamwork from Friday Night SmackDown. Uh-oh! Oh. Tried to eliminate the Demon's Chasing us. And then she eats Mickey DT gets eliminated. The real standout from the match, as I've already told you, is Maurice. She really gives Beth Phoenix a big fight, and she becomes the sole survivor from the SmackDown side. But of course she loses to Beth Phoenix with a glam slam. Shortly after Survivor Series on SmackDown, Maria finally gets her shot at the Divas Championship. Michelle McCool though defeats Maria with the ankle lock and doesn't let her go even after the bell ring. Her heel turn continues as she fights with the Bella Twins and Maria Canales when she loses to Maurice in a tag match. No! A week after, she loses to Maria in a singles match, and then she attacks Maria backstage. Ah! You got what you deserve. Armageddon 2008, during an 8 Diva Santa's Little Helper match, Michelle blind tags in and pins Jillian Hall to win. Here's a quiz. What move did Michelle McCool use to win this match at Armageddon? 
The answer is newly debuting Fate Breaker. Yeah, she had to change her finisher because the Wings of Love was banned, so she debuted the Fate Breaker, even though we now see Mandy Rose use Wings of Love. How times have changed. SmackDown then sees a number one contendership match between Maria Canales and Maurice, where Maurice wins. The week after, we're treated with the Divas Championship match with the special guest referee, Maria Canales. Michelle warns Maria to not mess things up. Please don't mess this one up for me. I highly advise against it. But Maurice wins the Divas Championship from Michelle McCool anyway. And new Divas Champion, Maurice! And Michelle completely loses it, brutally attacking Maria after her loss. Let's talk about ECW real quick. ECW really didn't have much going on its own, especially with the roster sharing going on. We did see the brief feud between Kelly Kelly and the team of Lena, Yada, and Layla. Here we see the best body swimsuit contest on ECW's HD debut and a dance off, which were all won by Kelly Kelly. They also bring in SmackDown divas like Victoria and Michelle McCool to further the feud. Yeah, so this is basically the only women's feud in ECW until like May. Tiffany! Hey, Mr. Tiffany. You're looking gorgeous. In June, Tiffany makes her debut as assistant general manager under Teddy Long, and Alicia Fox moves to ECW after ruining Edge and Vicky's wedding, teaming up with DJ Gabriel. Well, there you go. That is everything that happened in 2008. Thank you everyone for tuning in for this video. You can find me at DS Shin and Ring the Bell DS on Twitter, and I'll see you soon. Bye!